Alright, so today I'm going to be reassembling this input shaft. I already went ahead and removed this clutch side input shaft bearing and pressed this new one on. I went ahead and cleaned up the, the input shaft itself as well. We're actually going to be using a different input shaft because this old one over here, actually both of them, um, have some pitting on this I don't think you guys can see that, but I'm just going to go ahead and replace it because this thing's going to be putting out more power than it ever was intended to, so we want to make sure everything is as best as it can go. This is the gear stack we're going to be building, and I'm going to go ahead and get this camera set up and all my parts out and tools, and we'll get started. I'm going to go ahead and take here. This one is going to go first. This one has a bigger inner diameter. The other one won't fit, so it's an easy way to, to tell. Go ahead and put a little bit of transmission fluid in here as well. You don't have to go crazy, just a light coat. Alright, so I have the synchro on right here, and I have the new hub on. There's a recess, and that needs to face up, and then we need to put these three leaf springs in. So I have one in right here, one in, one in on the opposite side, and I only have to put this one in. It's the last one. And just push the synchro down, and push it back up with a little screwdriver pressure on everything. They're kind of a pain. By kind of, I mean they are. Be gentle and patient. Okay. So now they're all free in. And we can continue to push them all down. And as we're going down, just make sure the springs aren't popping out. What I'll usually do is hold the gear up a little bit with the against the hub. Alright, next we're going to go ahead and take this washer. There's a flat side and then there's a side with little dimple holes in it. The side with the dimples is going to go down facing this hub right here. Just some lube on it. Alright, so I have the right pliers now. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's like some like beveled edge on this side. That side is going to go against the hub, so down. The flat side is going to go up against the load. It's going to be pushing this way. So we're going to just barely spread it just enough to get it over. You don't want to spread these any more than you have to. I'll go ahead and make sure it's all the way seated. So then what you're going to do next is get a feeler gauge, and then you're going to check the clearance between second and third gear. So we're going to insert the feeler gauge right here and see how much axial uh, clearance we have between those two gears. The spec is between 0 0.05 to 0.40 millimeters. So Here's a 0.40 millimeter feeler gauge, which is a 16 thousandths. And 
that one doesn't fit, so we'll go down to a let's try a 0.22 millimeter. Still no, so let's go down a little more. Here's a 0.05. So this is the bottom of the spec. Also fits really easily. I don't know if you guys can see. Alright, next we're going to go ahead and fit the springs and the plungers. I already put a teeny bit of oil on these. Just put one spring in each hole. inside the spring. Okay, next we're going to go ahead and install the synchro hub engagement ring. Um, there's a machine <laughs> mark on top. That mark goes up. It doesn't say it has to in the owner's manual, but that's how they come apart, so that's how I put them back together. Go ahead and put a little bit of lube on this. I usually just put it in the center, like of the valley of the teeth, because it'll run out into the teeth. So then go ahead and place that with the machine mark up. And there are going to be two, there are going to be a couple sets of these higher lugs on here. I don't know if you can see them. But those go into the center of this hub. Because the center of this hub has slightly um, different marks as well, or teeth size to accommodate for those. Go ahead and install these um, pieces next. Um, these, I guess they're called rollers, so I just put one in at a time. Take like a small screwdriver. So, push the plunger back against the hub. A really thin blade screwdriver works best for this. I'm going to go ahead and pull that up just a little bit while holding these down so that it stays in place and there's no way those can pop out now. Synchro. Just going to move that up too. Um, these little. I thought the camera was over there still. These square edges right here go into the hub above those rollers. Just lay it in like so. So you don't have to try to hold the gear assembly while you do this. Go ahead and loop the gear. Go ahead and slide. 
slide this down. Actually, you know what I'm going to do first is we're going to put these springs in because it'll be easier right now. So since we struggle with the other one, just go ahead and put one in at a time on this synchro. Be easier than holding the gear and everything up. So we got that one in. Raise it just enough to get that in there. They're all in there, perfect. Now we can go ahead and grab. Oops. Now we can go ahead and grab the gear. Place it on there. Make sure it goes into both gears. locked on the shaft, neutral, both gears can spin, third gear, locked on the shaft. Alright, so that's good. So then next I'm going to go ahead and grab the, the, um, Input shaft bearing, the roller bearing that goes on right here, and this circlet, and I'll be right back to get that bearing. Alright, so you can see that this is the bearing that is going to be going on next. Um, I'm going to have to take this over to the press to press it in. I have this sleeve that I'm going to use. Actually, I'll take you guys over there. Alright, so I have my assembly in the press. I made this little fixture. Uh, just make sure that you're pressing on enough of the teeth. You don't want to like have it super close to the edge of one of the teeth. This is actually touching the shaft, so that's really good. And I'm going to start pressing it down onto the shaft. Just watch it from every single angle. Make sure it's going down smoothly. It's not binding. It's going down really easily. So that's what we want. So we'll keep going. Keep going. I just felt it seat. So now we'll go ahead and undo the release for the press. Take our tool off. that's it. Now, so we're going to fit this new snap ring now, circlip, whatever you want to call it. It's very specific that you fit the circlip with the beveled edge facing up. And it shows a little diagram right here. There's actually a bevel on the shaft, on the top part. So there's a flat side. I don't know if you can see it. This camera doesn't really focus very well. That's going to go downwards. And then on the inner lip, there's kind of a bevel. That's going to go towards the up, upper portion of the shaft. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to install this real quick. And then we'll have one more thing to check, and the input shaft will be done. two dimples on each side so that it'll hold this perfectly. Let's go ahead and get it like that, like so. The bevel edge is still facing up. And again, we're only going to expand this as much as we have to. the way with the screw 
screwdriver. Man. She's in. So then the last step that we're gonna do is check the axial play between um, fourth gear and the bearing. What I'm actually gonna do first is go ahead and tap this and make sure that it's cut all the way in. Definitely don't want that popping out. Very bad. Okay. So that looks good. So now we're going to go ahead and check that measurement with our feeler gauge again for fourth gear and between that and the bearing. Same spec, four, and this one looks like it's going to check out a little bit, a little bit greater of a clearance than the other gears. Say that's a point, about a point thirty, but still well within spec. So that's it for the input shaft for now. Yeah, it's a point thirty. So that's it for the input shaft. Let's double check it. Yep, it's all good to go. So next I'll probably show you guys how to install the ring gear onto the differential and then installing that into the case and putting the bearings onto the differential. That's it for today.